If you have a service business, I'm gonna tell you every page your website absolutely needs, and we're starting right now. If you wanna transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey there, I'm Wes McDowell, a web strategist for The Deep End, and if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. Okay, so over the last 10 years of designing websites for service-based businesses, I've discovered some commonalities and no matter what niche the service business is in, uh, there are certain pages that are definitely really important to include and some that just aren't. So my aim in this video is to go over all those pages that I recommend for service business websites and why each is so crucial for leads, conversions, and sales. Now, a few months ago, I did a video about all the pages you can probably start getting rid of off your website. If you want to start with that, you can click right up here. Otherwise, we'll get going. Okay, and right off the top, no surprise here, it's the homepage. Obviously, every website needs a homepage, but its role is actually probably more critical than you think. You know, I like to think of the homepage as the center hub of the entire website, and it should tell a complete story start to finish about why a customer would want to work with you. And the reason I recommend this is because the less you have people, you know, just clicking around different pages on their website, wandering around on their own, the more you're controlling the message and doling out the right information at the right time. But of course, everybody's a little different, right? And everybody has information that's more important to them. And that's why it's important to include all the other pages for people who want to you know, take deeper dives into certain areas. Some people might be really interested in price. Some people might really want to see reviews and testimonials. So now let's dive into the other pages and see what role they play in the overall scheme of things. And keep in mind, for most of these pages, you're going to want some representation of those pages on the website itself. So the home page can basically show little mini versions of these other pages with a link is an option to dive in to learn more. So the first page right off the bat is pricing. So I'm a big believer in being very upfront about your pricing, even if no one else in your niche is doing it, and even if you can't actually offer hard prices, like maybe you work more on a quote system, you know, things are more consultation-based and then you need to build out a quote, you can still talk about price. You just have to be a little more fluid about how you do it. So if you want to learn more about how to best handle a pricing page, I made a video about that. You can click right up here to access it. But long story short, if you can't actually list out package pricing, you can at least uh, talk about your different tiers of service and offer ballpark ranges for each. Or you can say things like prices start at or typical jobs are bid between this and this. In fact, even if you can list out all your pricing, I don't always recommend doing it that way because I've had clients in the past who have listed out just a huge price list of all the different options, and that can be really overwhelming to people. So you might be better off just talking in more general terms. Our typical package costs this, uh, but it can range between this and this. I find that's very helpful and at least allows people to come there and see if they're in your ballpark or not. So why even talk about pricing at all? You know, there's two reasons. The first being that people are expecting to see prices when they come to your website. It's one of the biggest things they're researching. So if you're not offering it on your website, they're gonna go right over to your competitor's website to see what they can find there. The second reason, I kind of touched on it earlier, it helps you screen out people who can't afford you and it cements you as a solid option for the people who can afford you and were expecting to pay that price. You know, believe it or not, not everybody is looking for the cheapest option. Some people are looking to spend a little bit more because they associate a better quality product with it. I started listing the prices on my website for the deep end because uh, there was a lot of misinformation out there about what a website should cost and I'm not the cheapest option out there. So I wanted to attract the people who saw the value and the extra benefits that the deep end provides, while also letting people know who might be looking for something less expensive that we're probably not the company for them. Because obviously it's not a great use of our time or their time to get on a consulting call if our budgets are way out of whack. All right, next is an FAQs page. So everybody coming to your website has questions, even if they don't know exactly what they are yet, and they've got objections too. 
and your FAQ page is an excellent place to take care of both. So start with the questions that you legitimately get all the time and just write them out as questions and answer them, as simple as that. Next, brainstorm all the possible objections, uh, either that you hear a lot or that you can anticipate getting from your customers. This can include price objections or time commitment objections or just not knowing if your service can help them in their specific situation. So write them out as questions and come up with a solid rebuttal for each in about a paragraph. The idea for this FAQ page is to make your ideal customers feel really good about taking the next step with you while also letting the people who aren't such a good fit figure that out as well. Because basically by saying who you're not a good fit for, you're gonna attract way more of the people who are a good fit. And that leads me to a bonus tip here. Uh, you might wanna consider renaming your FAQ page, Are We A Good Fit? That just gives the page a little more context uh, to the person reading it, rather than just reading a random list of questions and answers. All right, next is a big one and that's testimonials. So. We live in an information age where you can get reviews and testimonials on pretty much any business out there. So if you don't have them, you're at a serious disadvantage. But if you do them and you do them right, you're at a serious advantage because most of your competitors are probably not doing it the correct way. So if you have a bunch already either on your site or on Google reviews or Yelp, uh, just take your best 10 that tell that story from start to finish about how a customer was feeling before they found you, the problem they were facing, uh, how you helped them, and the end result. And feel free to edit these to be the proper length, which should not be too long. People don't wanna read a really long testimonial, as well as to tell that story properly, uh, obviously without changing the words or the overall intent of the review. You wanna keep it very ethical, uh, but it's good to just kind of take a raw testimonial and shape it in a way that makes the most sense. And if you don't have testimonials yet, think of the past clients or customers you could ask to uh, do a quick phone interview with. So get them on the books, call them, ask them leading questions that are gonna help them kind of tell that story start to finish and record that conversation and just transcribe the best parts into a good testimonial. And always try to use a photo of the customer right next to the testimonial. It just makes it come across as much more authentic and people can always connect more if they're looking at a face. And if you can possibly get a video testimonial, please do. Video testimonials are gold. I highly recommend having at least one. Okay, next we have a case studies or portfolio page. Now this isn't actually gonna apply to every single service business out there, but for the grand majority of you, it will. You basically wanna use this to show the positive transformation that you made for a previous customer or client. And you're gonna do that through a few carefully chosen case studies. And depending on the nature of what you do, um, these may be more visual based with a little bit of text to help tell the story, or they may be more text-based with a few visual cues to help things uh, come alive a little bit more for the reader. You know, obviously if you're an interior designer, you're gonna take a more visual approach and just write a little bit about what you did. Or let's say you're a financial planner. This is gonna be much more text-based. Pretty much a story of what you did for a client and what the final outcome was. Keep in mind, these should not be very long. You know, two or three paragraphs tops using bullet lists, and images when possible. So case studies are very important to show if you're promising to make something good happen in the life of a customer or client. When they become less important and when there's really not much of a need for them is if your business is more in the business of preventing something negative from happening or even fixing something negative. You know, I can't imagine too many people who are gonna be interested in reading a case study uh, from a plumber or a locksmith for instance. In that case, those people are much more likely just to want to read a few testimonials. All right, next we have our consultations or appointments page. So ask yourself, what is the main goal of your website? It's probably to book consultations or appointments with your potential clients, right? So of course you'll need a dedicated page for this on your website. And no, it is not a generic contact us page. So once you know what that action is that you want people to take on your site, like book a consultation, you're gonna to wanna to make a button that's bold and really pretty much in your face and you're gonna to wanna to repeat that 
all around the website. It should be in the header. It should be used in multiple places on the homepage and on every other page as well. And that button goes to this page that we're talking about, the, the main call to action page. So it can either be a simple email form that asks for a certain amount of information, and then you follow up with them, either via email or phone. Or my favorite method is a more proactive way. It's an online scheduler tool like Calendly that allows people to basically pick out a time and day that works for them, that also works for you, and they pick out the time, they give a little bit of information, and then they know when you're gonna call them back. And yes, you can still have that generic contact us page, but that should probably be linked to in the footer of the site, not up top where it's competing for attention with the main call to action goal of the site. All right, next we have the lead magnet opt-in page. If you've been paying attention to any of my other videos, you know by now that 80 to 90% of the people coming to your website are only researching and they're not ready to take the plunge with you just yet. So you need a solid lead magnet to entice them with. So this is basically a PDF, a checklist, a guide, a video series, an audio training, something really valuable. So of course, this deserves its own page on your website. That way you can link to it in your header navigation and you can link to it as a landing page from social media ads, like for Facebook ads. Because let's face it, one of the best ways to get people into your sales funnel is to advertise a freebie on Facebook, get people to download it. Now they're on your email list so you can keep sending out these helpful emails week after week. Um, scattered with a few promotional emails as well, so that they're hearing from you constantly and predictably throughout the process while they're trying to make their decision. So for that to work, you definitely want it to have its own page. Um, you'll include the title, a short punchy description, and a simple form asking only for their first name and email address. And under that, you can include a bit more info, essentially reasons why they would even want it. And I like including a bullet list of all the things they'll discover inside, using curiosity whenever possible. So on my five part video series, I talk about the two magic questions you need to answer, the most important but most commonly mishandled element on any uh, page, and the secret weapon content type you should be using. So entice them with curiosity, but then you need to pay off that curiosity in a really well done uh, piece of content. So what you don't wanna do is over promise and under deliver because that's gonna really backfire and miss the whole point of the trust that you're trying to gain here. All right, but now I wanna hear from you and I wanna know if I missed anything that you think is really important for a service website or are you missing any of these pages on your website? If so, uh, let me know and let me know why and put it in the comment section below with any other questions you have and I'll go through everything and answer all the questions I can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the circle icon right here to subscribe. And we don't have to stop right now. We've got two more videos for you right here. I've got a lot more to teach you. So go ahead and pick one of those out and I will see you in the next video.